Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 5. It's the fourth episode of this series. You know you're watching Hermitcraft when in the fourth episode you're seeing yourself an Enderman farm. Hi, I'm trying to look at you. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? It's going great here. <laughs> Obviously, I'm in an Enderman farm already. Uh, Mr. Wells Knight, who is online right now, has been trucking away at building this thing and boy oh boy am I excited to see here because as many of you have been wondering why we are rushing into the game so quickly Hermitcraft is a group of endgame players you know people who want to have all of the things available to them to build big and amazing projects uh, this enderman farm is a delight a source of XP a source of ender pearls I'm gonna fill up my ender chest and leave this place that's for sure However, when I came over here, I kind of expected there to be an enchanting station and also a anvil as well. I can't do anything without both of those things, and I believe I don't have the resources inside of my ender chest to do what I was going to do, which is make myself some fancy new boots. So uh, I brought the lapis, but no books for an enchanting table. I don't know if that's enough iron for an anvil, but we're just going to head back and do this somewhere else. So these boots have Frostwalker. Not terribly keen on that. And between all of these books, we can use Mending, we can make Feather Falling and Protection 4 if we combine it with this one, which has Unbreaking 3. And then over here we've got Depth Strider 3. Everything we need for an amazing pair of boots. And as you can see, I've got some useful and valuable items in here as well. I'm going to leave this behind though. As I said, we'll fill it up with Ender Pearls. We're going to leave this place. Before we do though, I would like to show you um, the farm from another angle. This is a design that was put together by Il Mango. I'm going to put it in the description box down below because it is super simple and super easy to build. You do not need a lot of resources, although it's a little bit hairy to build floating above the void. And speaking of that, you see this half slab right here? I placed that because that's the only way to walk into this little area, right? I tried to walk across like this and I fell down to the side and I smashed spacebar and somehow I managed to get in here. We came very close to dying for the second time so this little slab is how you get on and off of this platform. You almost killed me Wells man, you actually gave me a heart attack. So this is the Enderman farm and uh, hello, hi, down here, look in the bottom left, that's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's use this thing. So you can see it in action. So with Sweeping Edge, I can hit all of them that are in this 2x2 two two area down here. I also have Fire Aspects, so they get set on fire. And uh, you can see them all marching over. It looks absolutely ridiculous. There is an Endermite that has been name tagged in a minecart sitting near the top of where they drop down. <laughs> and that causes all the Endermen to run into this. Now, because it's built all the way down at the bottom of the world, we are currently at Y2, or at least I am. It means that those Endermen can spawn on that small platform very, very fast, because the lower down you are in the world, if there are no blocks higher up, mobs will spawn a lot quicker. And that is the farm. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> it looks absolutely ridiculous as well. So we got a full set of mending armor with really good enchantments on it. This is great. I think I think next episode we'll probably be ready to go to the end and hunt down some shulker boxes. We are flying straight into the end game here because I am all about the base building and the big project that I have planned for us across this massive piece of land. But uh, this thing right here, the old villager breeder. Oh, we had some blues last episode. It looked like it wasn't going to work. And then I decided what I was going to do was just farm crops over and over again. I was going to get as many of these as I could and then chuck them to all the villagers at the top and hope it would be enough to get them going. Of course, they do need food as well to breed. So this is an important part of how we get them breeding. Now, you can see that there's some babies down the bottom there. We've got two more brown coats incoming. That's excellent. And what we do to get them breeding is just chuck some carrots and potatoes or whatever in the uh, top area up here. Bam, there you go. Have those. They'll start breeding again and we'll get some more villagers. So we are all on track. I was really worried that this wasn't going to work. And I actually spent a bit of time doing some research on other designs. And I wasn't sure what to go with. So I'm glad that one's worked out. If you're wondering what this thing is, this is another way to, uh, to grow some crops. You've probably seen this before. This is the classic Impulse SV design. And what it does is basically grow things up really quickly. So with three dispensers, a little bit of redstone, you can just hit the switch, stand here with your carrots, and you need to stand close so you can pick them back up again. Hi. There we go. Sometimes it's a little bit slow to get going, and bam! 
just get loads of carrots really quickly. So I've been making use of that as well. And Impulse is actually really kind to uh, give me loads of stacks of bone meal, which has been extremely useful. I think I made it pretty clear that I wanted to build a crop farm. However, this is not that. The type of crop farm I wanted to build, I believe, will be affected by a village being nearby. Which is technically what that is up there. So the reason we're trying to get some crops in for the villagers is so we can get them breeding. There is actually an alternative design that Impulse has built on this server as well. And I think I'm just going to build his design since it's smaller, it's simpler, and this is our temporary area. When we build the crop farms, we need to plan out where other things are on this island because I believe something like this will disrupt it. Now this is much simpler and this is just a breeder as well. So we're going to dismantle that thing over there and this will take care of breeding villagers because these two guys are going to share crops with one another and then they're going to breed and the babies will eventually uh, walk off these trapdoors into these water streams and then we can take them through to another area. This thing isn't finished yet though. I've got to go and put a load of glass around the back here so the babies can't escape. Uh, but already we can see that it's working. But during my research I was reading that when you have a crop farm or you have villagers using crops, they will actually look for other crops in the areas, like these over here, and that will confuse them. Um, I've seen them standing at the edge here looking over at these bits of farmland, so we need to get rid of all of this stuff as well to make that nice and efficient. But this is a much better plan because this thing is smaller, it's simple, it's also temporary, it doesn't require a village, and it means we can get tons of villagers for trading. Ah, of course, the zombie pigmen had to wander into this little pen that I've made. <laughs> so I put all of the old villagers down here. Our new ones from this farm are going to be separated. And a moment ago I talked about the village. Well, I've removed the one in the sky. It turns out this thing does need one. I placed it down here, which is pretty much exactly where Impulse has uh, placed his in relative to this bit right here. So now all we've got to do is dismantle this old breeder. And actually it's still been going, even though I haven't given them some uh, some crops in a while you can see that they are still breeding so those ones will join this lot and the reason why I want to separate them now is because I believe some of these actually have food in their inventory which might be a problem when they're in that group there they might start throwing those around and hey that one's grown up and uh, breeding with another one another but anyway this this villager stuff we, we've done enough of it today it's, it's time to move on we've got our new breeder set up and uh, we can do some trading Okay, this guy's a problem now. <laughs> oh, one shot kill! I wasn't aware. By the way, that reminds me, my axe will be one hit kill. I could have used that because it's got smite five on it. And of course, this thing does more attack damage than the sword. So you can one hit kill zombie pigmen when you critical hit them. If you're in the never, that won't make all the other pigmen aggressive as well. So, with all of that taken care of, I want to start preparing this island, which is massive, by the way. I want to prepare it for our projects. We might start outlining some of the things that we'll be building in various places. But I want to do a first for this season, our first time lapse. You know that I do like doing my time lapses, and right now you're probably hearing some magical music in the background, slowly getting louder as we're about to go around the island and chop down all of the mushroom trees that are here.
Well, look at that. There's one mushroom left. I managed to miss one. <laughs> Uh, but this place is big. It's not quite as big as it feels when you start to move around it, which is cool. I'm starting to learn the landscape a little bit. You can kind of see most of it from this point over here as well. That's Falses Island over there. That's the one with the mushrooms, or sorry, mushrooms left. And if you have a look at my axe, you'll see that it's got on a little bit of a workout. But that's not the full story. I actually took a trip back to the end again to repair my axe because we used it so many times. And I've just remembered that I have my sound turned off. I hate recording with the sound turned off. It always feels like I've got to go back and record it again. But we're not going to do that right now because I want to power on with doing a few more things. And you can see... Uh, that my inventory is kind of full up at the moment with all these blocks. I've actually been trying to collect them as we pick them up as well because you can use them as a fuel source, of course. Uh, over there I did a little test. I couldn't remember if it was the mushrooms or the mushroom blocks that you could use as fuel, but you can indeed uh, use it as such. That's a really good fuel supply sorted out for us straight away here because that's going to you know, smell up tons and tons of stuff and there's a couple of other chests lying around here and there that have got loads of these blocks as well. So the next thing I would like to set up is a map. A map of the island so that we can update it over time and see it change. I want this to be like a little bit of a ritual, a regular thing this season. We go to the middle of the map, we check out what we've built and done in the island and see how it looks different. Now you could argue that I should have done that before this bit and I think you might be right. Oh and that wasn't the last mushroom, there's this one over here as well and uh, now we can say goodbye to it. <laughs> Doesn't take no time at all to chop those down. There you go, that's the last one. I'll probably discover another one soon. Uh, let's right click on this thing, let's find out where it's centered. Oh, wow, okay, right. We're going to need a lot more than 10, and this used up the very last of all of my iron. So I'm going to have to go digging for some more. I guess we're going to open one off the edge here, and that's going to look kind of a bit odd on the map. And already it's starting to feel like it's upside down. Let's put those two together. <laughs> and we want to hold one of them, actually. It's been a while since I've done the stuff with maps. Yeah, so we want to walk all the way down to the end here, and then open up the next one. Why am I not... Oh, it's quite a way, isn't it? Or is it? I feel like I'm I'm past that, you know, when I hold the map. Yeah, I can see where the sugarcane farm is. I can see a mushroom. I'm past here, so why isn't the icon updating? Is this a snapshot bug? It might be a snapshot bug. Um, also, is more of the map generating as I move forward? It's kind of not. Am I, am I going mad here, or have I done something completely wrong? Right, so that was the other one that was on the map. We hold the map. The map hasn't updated. But if we go this way forward a little bit, we'll know where to open the next one. In fact, I don't want to go just far enough so we're over the edge. I want to go quite a way out to the middle because that thing ain't updating. This is really worrying. I wanted this project to uh, to work, you know, not to run into problems straight away. Okay, so now it's time to open up another map. There we go. The entire thing is explored. This time, we're kind of moving around on it. So what happens if I take it out of my hand? put this one back again it's still okay so maybe after we make a new map this one will then lock out which is kind of what just happened so we're gonna walk down here over that hill and open one up there alright here we go BAM and that one we have explored the entire area so when we go back to this one okay are we gonna appear on the cursor kinda of looks like the cursor is moving a little bit it's kinda of hard to tell when it bobs about no look it's locked out Oh no, it hasn't. Okay. Right, so it's just the first one that we did that locked out. Whatever. Let's place a few of these down and check out what we've done so far. That looks really cool. I'm I'm not a big fan of mycelium. It's kind of ugly. We're going to tear off every little bit of this island and never see it again. Uh, but that on the map looks seriously cool. I think it's the shorelines as well where the blue is lighter that makes it kind of look like it's glowing. But anyway, it looks like we're going to need maps across those three spots, and then it's probably going to come out a ways over here as well. And that's way more than ten in total, isn't it? So probably going to have to go underground and do some more digging at some point. Right. Anyway, I'm going to... Actually, I should probably take these with me. That's going to help a lot. going to head over there and, uh, and get the ones on that side done. I like this idea. This is a good idea. And we're going to do this one proper. So we're going to go all the way around the edges as well. Hi. Bam. That one up there, this one here. I'll probably end up redoing that one that one right there again so we don't have that weird line. Down the bottom here it should then be this one and that one. 
Excellent. It'd be nice if this were just over a little bit more because all of that's kind of wasted space, but it actually looks really cool, doesn't it? I think I might even go for another row down the bottom here and then sort of frame it and we'll have a map room in here. This is just temporary for now. Um, so how many do we have left? Two? I need to do some caving next, don't I? But I'm going to get these ones in place first of all. Alrighty then, I've been underground, been all around, collecting iron and redstone and paper and swimming through the oceans. Oh, is that? Oh no, that makes, I think that makes sense. Bam, we're going to, yeah, okay. <laughs> For a second there, I thought we had the wrong thing. Bam, we got that one. So we see a little bit of Falses Island over there on the edge. That's no problem at all. Actually, at some point in the season, I think what we've got to do is like collaborate and build a bridge from one side to the other and do something awesome there. Um, so then we've got that, and these should still all be in order if I remember how I got them. This one is the top corner. Yes, there is a little island over here in that location. I'm probably just going to get rid of it, you know, just put it underwater, basically dig away the top layer. It's very flat and there's not a lot to it. And so that one is that bit there. Aha, I missed the corner, unfortunately. And then that one. So I want to recreate this one. In fact, I'm probably going to end up redoing those three. But there you go. That is our Mushroom Island right there. I have actually redone those three maps. I kind of forgot to record it because I've been getting carried away, mining underground, finding tons of diamonds, man. I'm getting so lucky. I've been down there getting some obsidian because I want to set up a nether hub really early. We're, we're putting in the infrastructure for all the plans that I've got for this place. You know, I want to be able to get around nice and easy. And this isn't just to do with our base as well, but this is 120 blocks away from the central portal which I've actually sort of not placed quite in the center because we'll we will build stuff there that means the portal will need to be off to one side but all of this right here can be opened up and I hope no lava falls down uh, what we are going to have this season as well is our own little mini nether hub right and this is something I did in season one I had an island called Avalon and what I did in the nether hub was I made a map of the island for the floor, like a block by block representation of where you could go. I'm thinking I might want to recreate that. I also might want to try and do something different and new. Or I could possibly put the map on the ceiling. Something along those lines. But this thing will basically open up and get bigger and bigger as time goes by. But it's a nice and easy way to jump from one side of the island to the other. So we'll go... Actually, we won't go to that one. We'll go to the middle one. So they're all deliberately in a straight line. They're the same distance from one another, which is really cool. And in the overworld, they're 128... Sorry, 120 blocks apart. So over the hill, there's another one over there. If we look at this thing, you'll see that the middle spot is right there. Um, so our other portal is like here. And then from there to there, it's about there, I think. So if we were to go to the left and try and recreate that distance, it would be somewhere around there, I reckon. And what I might actually do is make a little island. Um, if we go in the other direction, there's room for it. Now, what I'll probably think about later is that I should have had the portals, like, relative to what's going to be built around it. So we're not going to rush into decorating the nether hub. Like, the portal down here might move over into that area and be relative to where you actually want to go. Like, you don't want to travel here to walk to that part of the island, right? So, for now, we're just doing this temporarily to help us get around. I'm going to add another one that goes 120 blocks in that direction, and I'm going to start walking that right now. And I'm not counting. I know the coordinates. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but there's something else I want to connect this up to as well. There is actually a stronghold not too far away from here. So a straight line about 100 blocks, maybe a little bit further back in that direction is where the hub is. So you come down here, you can see it's not very far at all. Now this is kind of near to where those villages were. And I've actually left some portals up in the ceiling. Now we are at Y62 here, which is going to be very good for our um, nether hub at our base. It's at the same level. I think it's actually at Y64. But it means when we put portals underground and stuff, because we've done our synchronization at the same height in the nether, it should hook up really well. So when we want to put a project, let's say, down at the bottom near bedrock, the nether hub shouldn't have problems with its portals. And that should be uh, hopefully the case over here, because this one is lower down than the other one and the portal that we have in the stronghold is underground as well and I barely explored this thing by the way so let's have a look that's at Y29 so I might want to move the portal down a little bit but 
Like I said, there isn't other portals in the area. When I go back through here, it might synchronise with the one at the top. I really wish they would just make a much easier way to link nether portals together, something that was kind of foolproof, you know, maybe an item that you click on the two to link them together. Um, so this is literally the journey that you have to take from the portal, so we could probably just move the portal over here at some point. And uh, we are keeping the silverfish spawner. I am not going to destroy this one. I've always thought about doing <laughs> a silverfish farm project. It would basically be the same as the one that Etho's done. I couldn't really think of any other ways to innovate on what he's done. So we'll leave it there and then maybe like at some point in the future we'll think about uh, tackling that. But that's definitely not something we're going to do like in the first hundred episodes, if you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, right, let's pop back through here. Let's see that this thing has synchronized correctly because then it means we're done with these portals and I've got one last little project for this episode, yep, that's the correct spot. Excellent. So we are all synchronized up. So what does that look like to you? It's uh, a fishing farm, but one that's no longer temporary. This will be the permanent location of our fishing farm. We're going to continue this. But aesthetically, it will change over time, as this area is probably going to transform a lot. I say probably, it will. And we have a project for this middle area, and I believe that that is going to be very relevant to it. And it is nicely positioned as well. I'm trying to think things through as much as I can. And I had a little bit more planned for this. You see, down below, the way that we have arranged the hoppers and chests this time means that the items will flow all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to do some redstone between episodes that I'll show you in the next one. And I'll tell you what it is right now we're going to add at the bottom. It'll be another hopper, and this will be a lot bigger probably as well, that goes into a disposal system. Because after every fishing session, what I want to do is look through the chests, pick out the items that I want to keep, and then I want everything else to disappear and we'll do that automatically with a disposal system at the bottom. It's going to be extremely useful but I've run out of time to do that right now. So it's a little thing I can do in between episodes which means that's it from us this one. I uh, do hope you have enjoyed it and if you have leave a like on the video as always. Thank you so much for your support. I'm going to do some AFK fishing while I render this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.